This video is a record of a couple of winter sessions at Albra on a Holderness coastline. I'm at the road end part of this section where there's awkward but relatively safe access onto the beach. Since I'm fishing in dry conditions, it's easier to negotiate the track along this landslip. Great care needs to be taken if it's raining since you're walking over boulder clay. That's easily eroded, frequently changing the form of the cliffs. Although I've chosen to fish neap tides, I've still safely positioned myself just in case I have to retreat back onto the cliff. The sandy beach slitted for small boulders eroded from the cliff and these are also found where you're casting. I've managed to source some of the local bait which is yellowtail lugworm so I'm confident of catching even though the area hasn't been fishing well. Once handled everyone will know what bait you've been using. I've also got some squid and sprats if needs be and some ragworm as backup. My gear is set up for fishing for decent sized fish rather than dabs. I've got cuddling in mind so it's panelled pulleys and loop rigs. I'm not expecting monsters so two O hooks should be big enough. The top snid on loop rig has a one O hook. My rods are kept high since I'm not fishing for flat fish and I want to avoid the line wrapping around some of those boulders. I'm not expecting a strong tidal pull so my loop rig is attached to a plain continental lead. I'm casting this one out first and the finger stall helps with distance. I'm mainly looking out for drop back and slack line bites. For this type of fishing it sometimes helps to use breakaway wired lids. The wires dig into the seabed and sometimes the bigger fish will bolt and dislodge this causing the drop back. So my pulley rig is attached to one of his leads and the slack liner will indicate that fish is taken and bolted. I've arrived a bit late with about an hour and a half before the top of the tide so I've set up quite a distance away from the water's edge. There's also a ledge in the cliff above me that I can climb onto if the water reaches the cliffs. Having cast both rigs out, I've run through the locational details. The whole of the Holderness coastline and the Humber estuary is prime cod territory. Here I've identified some of the better known venues. Albro is between Mapleton and Hillston, south of Hornsey. Homing in on the area, the adjacent sections are Cowden and East Newton. To get a bit on fishing, you drive through Albro village and along the seaside road until you get to the leisure park. That's on your right and there's parking before the barrier at the end of the road. So this part of the venue is referred to as road end and the southern bit as a dip. Apparently it doesn't really matter where you fish along here but nevertheless I've pointed out where I've fished for these two sessions. Because I've got a plane lid on a loop rig I'm able to drag that to try and entice a bite. The drop back of my pulley rig gets me excited and I strike into what I think is a half decent fish.
Well, that's the result. A cuddling on my first cast with that rod. It's not that big, but that'll do me. It's taken three yellow tails, tipped with a squid head. Having recast, I've noticed my line's gone slack on my other rod. I strike and feel a little bit of resistance. much smaller fish but would you believe it, it is another cuddling so that's two cuddling in my first two casts and I can't remember the last time that's happened this fish fell for the single yellow tail on top snud my part of snud of my loop rig has got two yellow tails decent knock on the rod with a loop rig. Decide to strike it, but I miss it. I won't wind it in, but leave it there in case the fish decides to have another go. Shortly after that bite, I get slack line up. Another great result. Now that's three cuddling in four casts. Unlike the other two, this must bite plump and it's fallen for the single worm again.
One of the advantages of a loop rig over the pulley rig is that you've got a few more options with your bait. The fish can have a choice of a smaller bait on the top snood or the bigger one on the bottom one. Should you be new to this and are interested in making your own loop rigs, I've got a tutorial in the top right hand corner and in the description for this video. Bit of a miscast and rig drops short. At first I considered to leave it there but I changed my mind since those cuddling have been at distance. It's right at the top of the tide now and the sea hasn't encroached as far up the beach as I was expecting it to. However, I'm not considering moving my gear down the beach just yet since the odd large wave is still sending the wash quite some distance. A couple of large taps on the rod with a pulley rig. I missed that bite and encountered my first snag. Since I freed a rig, it can stay out there a bit longer. on a loop rig and that snags up. Unfortunately I'm not able to shift it. I end up having to pull for a break. I'm guessing that my rig got caught behind one of the larger bolters out there. That is something to be aware of because decent fish will find these. On return I've noticed the line on the other rod's gone slack. Now that's gone solid as well. Now I think that was a case in point. The fish has shed the hook and got my rig stuck. So two rigs lost in succession and I had to set up all over again. The tide has now started to recede and it didn't take long for a bite on a new loop rig. 
I wind in a lot quicker now to avoid a rig getting snagged. Nothing to write home about, it's only a tab. If I could rebate, there's a boat on the other rod. Sony Rockling attached to the top hook on a panel rig. When I started fishing, the wind was directly from behind. It's now veered round and it's coming from the north. As well as the wind, the sun's also moved round and I'm now in the shade and it's becoming distinctly chilly. The boats have picked up but they're only little taps. Whatever was on there has come off, but it wasn't very big. Time to move down the beach and into that remaining sunshine.
waiting on a putty rig and it's attached to the top hook. I fished on with a bigger bait, still hoping to catch another decent fish, but I was only getting tiny little knocks. I then hooked something which I thought was quite decent. Unfortunately, it's got me stuck. The line parts, and I decide to call it a day. So, a great start to the session, but it didn't develop into something really memorable. Since there were some cuddling about, I decided to come back and fish the same spot the following day. I got here a bit earlier and decided to use the same approach, only this time I've replaced the loop rig with a two hook clip down rig and I've shortened the length of drop on the pulley rig. I'm hoping that these changes will reduce the chance of me losing rigs behind those boulders. This approach has worked for me in the past on venues like Bristol Channel. Shortening the hook lengths means you're in contact with fish quicker. This gives you a bit more control and helps prevent them dart behind rocks. Well, that's a theory anyway. It's a smaller tide today, so I haven't set up as close to the cliffs as I had the day before. didn't take long for my first indication, but that didn't develop into a proper bite. A couple more taps later and I decided to wind the rig in. The first fish is a whiting, so it's not the start I wanted. However, it's of reasonable size, so I shouldn't really complain.
Dr. Sonja Verrotner. Now that's two bites in a row when I think I've got something on, but there's nothing to show for it. Is this fur time lucky? No. Unfortunately, if there was something there, that's come off as well. The bait doesn't look damaged, so I can just realign it and send it back out. Unfortunately, I crack off on a cast, so this could end up as one of those days. A previous day started on a high, but this one seems to have started as a disaster. Baiting up a pen or pulley rig is quite straightforward. I rarely use a baiting needle, preferring to thread on the bait by hand. Here I'm mounting two yellowtail lugworm and a squid head. The yellowtails are sold in seawater rather than wrapped in paper. I'm picking out two of the larger ones and threading them on. I'll be pinching the tails off once they're on, since there seems to be small fish about. Sometimes they tug on the tails, giving plenty of little knocks which you can't hit, since they don't get a hook into their mouths. If there's just larger fish about, I'll leave them on, since they just suck in the whole lot. The first worm is pulled up the line and then threaded onto the top hook. The second worm is mounted on the bottom hook and pulled past the bend of the hook, allowing space for the squid head. I don't normally whip this on, but I pinch off the longer tentacles so that small fish might tug these. The 
bottom hook of the pedal rig goes on the impact lead. I've already replaced the lost rig on my other rod with another panel setup. This one's without the squid head. The hook length's lighter at 17 pound and the hooks are smaller. A 5 ounce breakaway continental lead completes the setup. This lighter pulley rig may work better if there aren't many cuddling about and I may go down to using just one large worm. Just like the previous day, the wind was from behind when I started, but it's now veered round to coming from the north. I only had the one whiting up to high water, and the tide is now receding, and fortunately the bites are now picking up. But again, they're rather difficult to hit. Smaller baits on boom rigs would probably work, but I'm less likely to catch cuddling doing that. I think get a decent knock on my left hand rod which I managed to connect with. It's not a cuddling, but whiting number two.
bait still looks okay, so I can just cast it back out again. I'm starting to find the snags now, but fortunately I'm not losing any rigs to them. The next fish is a fat rockling and it looks like the cuddling aren't going to show. The rockling is quickly followed by a dab, but it's foul hooked. The angler who was fishing to my right has long since packed up and he blanked. I'm now trying and whipping on a larger bit of squid on my heavier setup, but realistically my chances of catching a codling have faded, but you never know.
The little taps continue, making fishing quite frustrating, since I know I'd hit these if I was fishing with much finer gear. So a pretty difficult day ended in five whiting, one rockling and one dab. The main thing I learnt is that you just got to be lucky and be here at the right time when the codling decide to show.